Hello and a warm welcome to Successful Garden Design Show episode number 34. Now once again we're going to be focusing on plants in this episode and I'm going to walk you through what I consider to be the master planting colour. Now this is something that people often overlook and undervalue which is a real shame because it's one of the keys to creating a stunning planting scheme in your garden. If you're frustrated your garden doesn't look as beautiful as it could, even though you've purchased lots of lovely plants, then help is at hand. Plants are not enough. You have to have a good design layout. And when you combine design with the beauty of plants, that's when the magic really happens. It's our mission here at Successful Garden Design to show you how to do it. And it's much easier than you may think. I'm Rachel Matthews and I've been a professional international garden designer for over 25 years and I teach garden design online. So what is this neglected and undervalued plant colour? Well, it's green. Now I know, most people seem to think green is dull and boring and they really don't pay it much attention. But if you can get your greens right, it can absolutely transform your garden and it will look good no matter what the time of year is. Now, it's easy to get carried away with flowers and their colours and that's where most people find the most interest within their garden. And whilst that's all well and good, if you ignore the greens, you're missing out on such a huge, enormous potential within your garden. So I'm now going to demonstrate exactly what I mean by utilising the master colour, green. Now on our early morning dog walks, we sometimes cut through an urbanisation that I think epitomises my master green theory. And if you look at the plants that they've got here, you'll notice the vast majority are just green foliage plants. Now there's all types of different green, all types of different textures and shape of leaf. But when I walk through this urbanisation, it's very, very calming. You really feel at peace. Now, this is quite a shady one because the basement garden, it's got a lot of apartments that rise up above it. So very little light comes in, which is why they've had to use so many greens as quite a lot of evergreens are quite shade tolerant. Now it helps having the white walls that helps bounce off any available light. But what you'll notice is that the green, there's a vibrancy to it, is not a dull garden, even though it's the majority is foliage plants that aren't flowering. So this garden is a great example of just how many different shades of green there are. And when you combine that with different leaf, shape, size, textures, you get a really interesting looking garden. And this garden never looks dull, no matter what time of year it is. And as I say, the vast majority of it is green. Now there are a few flowers dotted around, but actually when I was walking through, the area that had these clivias that were in flower, they actually didn't look as good as the round the corner where they weren't in flower because the structure of that particular plant is so nice that the flowers actually detracted from it. Now there are two main keys to having a fabulous looking garden. The first is the design layout and the second is what planting you use within that design layout. Now here's the key. If you get your planting, if you get your greens right, your garden will look good all year round. Doesn't matter what time of year, what's in flower, the underlying structure as shown in this garden will always look good. And then when things come into flower, they're coming in as an addition. They're the cherry on top of an already fabulous cake. But if the cake is still delicious, regardless of that cherry, then you're on to a real winner. So what do you need to look for in order to do this? Now, I'm going to run through a few things. The rest I'm going to put into a separate video that I'm going to do in the members area for those people that have got the plant design formula. But to give you some quick tips so that you can get going, really focus in on the shade of green. The depth of green that you use is really important. And if you've got greens that are similar in color, you need to make sure that the leaf shape is different so that that plant stands out. You don't want everything becoming a blur of green, like this section, which is in a different garden. So if you really want to learn more about how to combine greens, I recommend you visit the YouTube channel of artist Samuel Earp because he explains greens in terms of their value and density. And once you understand that, then you'll be able to do some more, a deeper level of magic with combining them, which I will also cover for members of the plant design formula course.
But anyway, back to this garden. The other thing that I really love about this garden is the 3D dimensionality of it. Because you're viewing the garden from so many different levels, they've really worked in the taller plants that you can see from the top. And also they've taken into account the shape and form of things as you look down. So it doesn't matter whether you are walking underneath these plants to the side or above them, there's still plenty to look at. So if you do have a tall building or you're looking down, consider that view as well when you're thinking of your planting plan. And yes, I know not everyone lives somewhere where you can easily grow palm trees, but it's not that that you need to focus on. There's other things that have wonderful shapes that you can use, even in colder climates. So it's just a matter of finding something that is visually striking, that's going to do the job that those palm trees can do in warmer climates. So let's show this in practice. Now, it's been a few years since I've given an update on how the garden in Spain is looking. So you can see here, even though there's lots of spiky foliage, because they're different colors and different textures, you can get away with it. And where the greens are similar colors, because the leaf size and shape is so different, again, you get away with having similar shades of green together. Now. When I designed this garden, I wasn't focusing on the greens as much as I probably would now because it was over 10 years ago. Um, so I've done it almost by accident. But as I say, I'm going to put a video that really homes in on the greens in the plant design formula course so that you can take your planting to the next level. Because, you know, when a garden looks good, regardless of something is in flower or not, you know that you've done a really good job. And just having different types of leaf where the sun can come through, they really show off the flowers. When you've got the greens right, it feels good. And the whole garden just works as a whole entity rather than a series of unrelated parts. So first and foremost, the design layout's the most important. But then you really need to focus well on your planting. So if you'd like some help creating the perfect planting plan for your garden, then do check out the Plant Design Formula course, which is on special half price offer until the end of May 2021. And that will show you how to combine plants. So how to get the greens right, how to combine the shapes, sizes and colours and make the perfect planting scheme for your garden. Now it also comes with the five minute plant expert as a free bonus. Now the five minute plant expert teaches you how to become a plant whisperer. So how to know what the plant needs just by looking at its leaves and how to know which types of plants will grow in your soil and aspect, etc. But a quick word of caution, unless you have done a good design layout, do not get the planting course because it won't help you. Unless you've got the design layout looking right, it doesn't matter what you do with your planting, you're not really going to create a great looking garden. So if that's the case, if you haven't got a good design layout, then instead go to our free garden design online web classes. And you've got three to choose from depending on the size of garden or if you want to do it professionally. And this will walk you through the nine steps that it takes to create a fantastic fantastic garden. To sign up to those, just go to successfulgardendesigner.com forward slash free dash classes. So I hope this episode has inspired you to really think about the greens you have in your garden and to embrace using evergreen plants. They're one of the main keys to having a garden that looks good no matter what the time of year. So until next time, take care. You're not helping. You're not. No, you're not. You're just covering me in dub slobber. <laughs> <laughs>